The Boston Celtics have won the NBA Finals. They did it. Yay. <laughs> Uh, Jalen Brown has been named the NBA Finals MVP in what was the least thrilling NBA Finals since I have been alive. Your thoughts, Carter Elliott? Uh, it's It's been a while since I felt like I was kind of just happy, relieved the NBA Finals was over. Just wasn't wasn't very enjoyable. Um, congrats to Boston. Now, I'm, I'm a little bit different than everybody else in the fact that, like, I really like Jason Tatum just – because I'm I I just do like I I don't know what it is like I like Jason Tatum I think he's cold as fuck um so that is what it is but my brother you're really making it hard on me man like the after win antics were just very terrible uh it gave off the vibes like he was practicing all week what he was gonna say after they won and none of it hit and I have I have another actual point outside of Jason Tatum that I want to say for it, but overall, yay, yay for the Boston Celtics winning eighteen. There's nothing I hate more. Actually, well, Eric Ebron's up there, but besides that, like Boston sports fans are the absolute worst. I hate Patriots fans. I hate Celtics fans. I hate Boston Bruins fans. The Dan O'Chara, you got to see me eventually. You can't hide for the rest of your life, brother. I just I don't rock with anything Patriots sports, and the fact that that fan base is happy kills me on the inside. Okay, all right. Uh, so much unexpected, I guess, uncoverings there in that from you. One did not know that you quote using your words love Jason Tatum. Did not know that he's cold, man. Like I don't I don't understand like. Nobody's I nobody's it. fighting that he's a good basketball player. Everybody knows. He's I, a good basketball oh player. no! Oh, I I think a couple people are starting to fight the he's a good basketball player thing. I think people are fighting he's a great basketball player, which would be backed up by the fact that he didn't win Finals MVP here. Like, is this should he should, he should he have won it? I don't think so. I would have voted Jalen Brown. I, but I also I don't think it's like as big of a people shouldn't be caring about that as much. Um, I, I look, I think that a big part of the dialogue around the Celtics and why I hate the Celtics and why they're just unlikable in general is that Jason Tatum is corny as F, to use your word. Um, he is just not cool. He's not going to be cool. It's okay to not be cool. There are a lot of players that are not cool that have come through NBA history and have put their mark on this league. Uh, Jason Tate, the, the, the thing about Tatum is that he really wants to be cool. There are some guys who are not cool that just own that they're not cool. Um, I, I don't have any great examples off the top of my head, to be honest with you, because it's hard to think of many all-star players that have won titles that have been as remarkably uncool as Jason Tatum is, but like Dirk comes to mind, like Dirk was not cool. And I don't think Dirk ever tried to be cool. He just kind of like owned that he's a quirky little weirdo who stayed off to the side. And then he won a title late in his career. Jason Tatum like abundantly wants to be cool. Like everything that guy does is like calculated and he spends time at home prepping himself to look cool. And it just becomes more and more obvious that he's not cool every time he does something like this. Yes, the yelling like we did it like it was this massive emotional moment. Um, like dog, it, it, everyone knew you were going to do it from like game two, halftime of game two in the series. Like you didn't have to overcome shit. You guys were clearly the best team and yes, you should be emotional. I, and I, I know I'm just hating on the person. I don't love to do that, but he's just lame. Everything he's done in his career is lame. And it's okay to say that with that said, Jalen Brown is like not lame. Jalen Brown, like actually has some personality and is like kind of fun uh, it was fun to dunk on Jalen Brown in the past for that Malika Andrews or Taylor Rooks interview, whatever one it was. Um, which was it, Taylor Rooks? It was, was Taylor, Taylor Rooks, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I confused that with Malika, but I, uh, I like just I think it's been kind of friction, and people manufacture friction between them because Jalen Brown actually like has some swagger and some confidence, and is just inherently himself, and Jason Tatum is like such a wannabe cool guy that now that Jalen Brown has like played as good as Jason Tatum, because for years Tatum was clearly the better player. Now they're like true equals. They're true equals. 
And I think people are gravitating toward Jalen Brown, giving him the credit because it's more fun to give Jalen Brown the credit than it is to give Jason Tatum the credit. But that only adds to the chip on Jason's shoulder, who is like pretending he's this team oriented guy who doesn't care. And in reality, you can tell it's just eating at him. It's all, it's a funny dynamic all around. None of it matters. The takeaway here is that the Celtics are a legendary team. I mean, do you think this team should be remembered years from now as one of the better teams in NBA history or no? Uh, nah, I probably won't remember them like a couple months from now. Why do you feel that way, though? Because I feel the same, but like their record and the dominance in the playoffs would say otherwise. It's just, it's Boston and it's full of players I don't really rock with. You rock with Tatum, you said? Yeah, I rock with Tatum, but like I don't really rock with Jalen Brown like that. I think Jalen Brown's just as, I think he's just as on that quirky thing that you talk about. And he had a Mickey Mouse run. That dude couldn't dribble with his left hand two weeks ago. He got a lot. He better. finally can now. So it's like it's yeah. it's good. I I get it. He got but a I lot think, better. I think people focus their hate on Jason, which makes it easy for Jalen Brown to just kind of just Probably coast true. by. Probably true. Probably yeah. very true. Yeah. But like I I'm not the biggest like Drew Holiday guy or Al Horford, Peyton Pritchard, Derek White. Like I, I just don't really I, I just don't rock like I, Joe Mazzulla's like whole like weirdo thing like doesn't resonate with me. I just I don't rock with those. I just don't yeah. rock with Boston. I hate Missoula. Um yeah, I don't we're coming across as haters. I think uh this team has I, I wanna make it I wanna make it very clear I am in this case. <laughs> like, I don't wanna hide it. Like I I hate everything Boston. I do. I hate everything Boston sports. Everything. I don't even like Boston cream pies. This team has won me over a little bit, I will say. Not like in a I like them way, but in a I respect them way at least. Um, yeah, like uh, as of a week ago, I was like, this is horrible. They're 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 one of the worst title teams ever. Now I'm like, okay, got to give respect where respect is due. They were legitimately great. I would say I love the role players. Like that's what I'll remember about this team. You said you don't rock with any of them. Uh, I rock with pretty much every non-J player on this team i really like Derek white i love the way he got better uh, i think drew holiday should go down as one of the greatest like winners in recent nba history what he did for milwaukee and then getting shipped to boston like you want to talk about the defining moment of this nba season probably when the bucks traded drew holiday to their interconference rival and made them instantly <laughs> the best team in the league uh bad look for my guy dame i've always been a damian lillard guy this is a pretty bad development they swap drew holiday for dame and this happens i'm happy for al horford grand ledge michigan legend i still remember when i was like i must have been like five or six going to see al play in high school at grand ledge and uh to to finally get over the hump after a long career of like winning I mean, those Hawks teams, like, never won anything important. But, like, Al Horford, like, helped that team always be good, get a one seed in the East. And I was happy you could tell how much it meant for him. Uh, Peyton Pritchard, can't think of a cooler thing than just being the white boy with some shit to him who just hits half-court shots every game. That's sick. Dream, like, come, dream come true. <laughs> that That's literally my – if I could do anything with my life, I wish I was doing that. Uh, and Brad Stevens. I've always been a Brad Stevens guy. I like to think I've been a Brad Stevens truther. And uh, I'd like to give all of the credit for this championship to Brad Stevens because uh, the moves this man flipped this roster from in the offseason, from like, I, I mean, it was a pretty gross, broken roster. People pointing at Tatum and Brown being like, you got to split those guys up, trade for Damian Lillard. And instead, he just like rips Drew Holiday from his biggest interconference rival, gets poor Zingas from the team you're going to play in the finals gets uh like every little role player uh, Derek white right like it seemed like he overpaid for Derek white and he didn't i just think he put on a master class in gming and uh he's probably one of the greatest basketball minds of all time yeah brad stevens definitely pulled all literally every single right string here yeah. and i think the best part about it is is that th there's something to be said when it works too because it's everyone in the world telling you this isn't going to work. This isn't going to work. You have to, like, you, everyone was talking about, you got to split these guys up. Like, right now, you got to switch things up or it's just going to be, maybe you get to this point, but you never get over the hump with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, da-da-da. And he said, no, nah, like, we're going to make this work. I'm going to get all these guys. I'm going to get these guys that defend and are 
literally prototype role players for what you need around two star players and Tatum and Brown. And it, it worked to perfection. Um, before we wrap up our thoughts on the Celtics, can we get some Mavericks thoughts out here real quick? Yeah, go ahead. If I'm a Mavericks fan, there there's no other pain that I can relate this to besides taking like a 12 gauge shotgun to the chest uh, at close range. Um, then having my star player who has been pretty bad throughout the finals run to Twitter within 37 minutes of the game, every single game they lose and say, stick together, family. We're going to be good. Hella. Like my brother, like play better. Like, what are we, what are we doing here? Like the, the running to Twitter to like make everybody okay and make everybody cool. It's just like, it was so it's just, that would kill me. And it was also so funny to me that Kyrie tried to have like his Bron moment. Like you remember when Bron was like dapping up everybody on the Warriors when he checked out from the last time and was like, it's just showing like a bunch of love. It was funny that Kyrie like tried to have that moment as well. Like he wasn't going to you know, see them again when he just went out onto the floor directly afterwards, after the game to say good game to everybody again. Um, that, uh, that was very funny. Also, Luca needs to get in shape. Yeah, uh, the, the, I was surprised you led with the Kyrie stuff. To me, Kyrie is who he is. Kyrie is Kyrie. He is a Hall of Famer. He is one of the more fun, skilled, creative guards to ever play this game. He's also a complete insane person. And he also has like a pretty large ego. And yeah, that whole, the moment of like walking off the court. Yeah. I, I kind of actually didn't hate it, but you're right. It, it felt like he's doing the LeBron after so many years of him being anti LeBron and having issues there. Uh, Luca, I don't know what to make of Luca. I love Luca Doncic. I love watching him play. There's just so much negative to how he plays. Like e even a, a stellar, phenomenal, perfect Luca Doncic game comes with like 30 defensive lapses. Like the guy can't guard. He doesn't guard and he can't guard. And the offensive way he plays, like the foul baiting, it always leads to like runouts. Like it's not even like he doesn't guard and he leaves guys open. Like his mistakes, selfish offensive plays lead to like wide open dunks and threes, probably 10 times a game for the opponent. And I don't know how you're supposed to win an NBA finals when that happens, at least against anybody good. Um, maybe he develops, maybe he figures that out in the future, but I thought like Windhorse kind of just na nailed it this week. It sounded harsh, but like, if that's your guy, I, I don't think you're going to win many championships. It's difficult. Yeah. And I, and I think you see the difference between how the Mavs were built and how, you know, honestly, even, even coaching things like in an elimination game, an elimination game on the road at Boston, you're struggling. And like Jason Kidd's throwing out lineups out there with PJ Washington, Derek Jones, Derek Lively, no Kyrie, no Luca out there. And I'm like, dude, you're down 10 right now. You know that, right? Or they're going on this big ass run and he's doing the Darvin Ham hand in the pockets thing. And I, yeah, the, I mean, they, they made this inevitable. This should have been a sweep, but I, you know, obviously it ended up going five games, but, uh, Good on the Mavs for making it here, I guess. Um, but yeah. uh, bad showing yeah. you know, in the finals. Let's be real. As we're talking uh -oh. through the Mavs, their third best player is P.J. Washington. Yeah, I mean, we, we do realize the Mavs were a five seed, right? Their third best player is P.J. Washington. Like, <laughs> I, uh, my, I think my broadest takeaway from this NBA finals is uh, – I, I think I might hate the NBA, <laughs> number one. <laughs> and then number two, can we bring back super teams? Everybody acted like super teams were so bad for the sport. Super teams were awesome. I miss super teams, man. Like, I'm looking at LeBron and KD and Curry, and they're all sitting at home. I don't even know what they're doing. Like, LeBron's playing agent for his son right now. And KD, who knows what Kevin Durant's doing these days. But, like... I, I, I want some super teams. I want to see like great teams that I feel like are like Hall of Famer, all timer organizations and groupings win championships. 
And right now it feels like every team has like one superstar who's extremely flawed. And then the Celtics have two stars. And two stars and a bunch of good role players is better than one flawed superstar everywhere else. Nah, miss me with that. Give me like four superstars on one team again. We need the Heatles. We need somebody, like some young group that's not in the LeBron era anymore. The new era needs to group together somehow sooner rather than later before it's too late. Well, who's going to do it? Who's going to make it happen? Somebody's got to lead the charge. I mean, the one I, that I, I would like is is Jokic and Doncic. That's perfect. Like make it happen. Just I don't I don't know what the contracts are. I don't know how we can like force a trade, hold out, but like give me the two fat Europeans who hate basketball, and let's let them be fat and hate basketball together and just be too good. <laughs> I, I like it. It would probably work. Um, Honestly. Do you, looking back, do you wish that we talked about the NBA Finals more? No. Was this the worst NBA Finals of your life? Yes. Do you think it's going to be better next year? Not unless something changes, no. Yeah, it's a depressing time. It's a depressing. Yeah. Can I blame LeBron for this? No. Are you sure? Yes. Who can I blame for this? You can blame me, I guess. If you and I were the Celtics, you talk about it's like two stars with the perfect role players. Let's say sleepers media is the Boston Celtics. We've got all our little Derek Whites and Al Horfords around us. Which one of us is Jason Tatum and which one of us is Jalen Brown? I mean... I'm probably Tatum because Brown's like quirky and I think you're quirky. Okay. So I feel like I'm Tatum. Like I would, I'm, I'm definitely going to carry myself like I'm Tatum when I have my son. Like I, I might name him singular instead of deuce. You definitely spend a lot of time calculating what would look cool. A hundred percent. Yeah. A thousand, a thousand percent. Uh, but I, but I think I do a great job. Of it. Honestly, I think I'd be a good mentor to Tatum on how to just, even if you are trying to manufacture some things, like there's a way to go about it where you just make it look natural. Do you text dead people a lot? I've never texted dead people. No. Do you get jealous of me? No. Yeah, that was such a Jason Tatum answer. I mean, I'm not, I'm not the jealous. That was type. such a Jason Tatum answer. <laughs> Damn it. Am I Tatum? I have no left. This is a really good comp. The NBA draft is coming up, and I've got something awesome for you. We are partnering with the people at NBA 2K Lab. NBA 2K is the best video game on earth. The people at 2K Lab are making some awesome stuff to make that game even more fun. And they just launched their 2024 NBA Draft Simulator, where you can find the official Sleepers Media Big Board. We ranked our top 75 players in this draft class. Me, Carter, Brian Ralph, Riley Davis. We did it together. And it is featured on the 2K Lab NBA Draft Simulator. You can take control of any team in the draft. Play GM with just one click and see our entire rankings before these videos even come out. Check out the link in the description of this video to try out the draft sim for yourself. And you can find more mini games at nba2klab.com slash nba-mini-games.